What's up, guys? It makes me vibes here. I just want to say, I hope your day is going good. I hope your day has been filled with love and and positivity. And I genuinely hope things are going your way. As you see from the, the title of this video, this message is strictly for you. If you are watching this, first of all, thank you. And secondly, you are meant to find it on your feed, your recommendations, however you found it. I want to first say thank you guys for all the new subscribers. Thank you for all the love and support that you've been giving me. Um, I've been feeling overwhelmed, honestly, and I just really appreciate you guys. So so thank you for that. And uh, keep keep watching the content. Keep uh, keep commenting. But I wanted to I wanted to talk today about my personal story and how during times of adversity you should lean onto Yahweh lean onto Yahweh during times of adversity let's roll the clock back 2 months i i fell at work and not only did i bruise my tailbone but i bulged my disc in my lower back and the past two months, I have been on such a healing journey, such a a space where I had to sit down and I had to really think about my life and think about what's important. You know, I had been moving so fast, so constant, no time for stillness, no time for prayer, no time for anything other than distractions. Right. The enemy will will really bring distractions in your life for you to not focus on what's important. Seriously. Every second of the day was filled with some type of activity out of work. It was going to hang with a friend, going to do this, going to do this. I had no time for myself. And subsequently, it caused my health to deteriorate. And when I fell and fell on my tailbone and I fell off. Uh, this platform I was on, right? My job is very strenuous and I was there and I was tightening something down or chucking something down. Uh, as many of you guys know in physical labor, like sometimes we're not careful or sometimes our tools are, are not up to date with certain things. But regardless, I was chucking something down. I fell off the platform, fell and bruised my tailbone, bulged my disc from my L5 to S1. Um, I really thought I was not going to be able to walk again. Uh, the first day or so, I really didn't feel it as much. But as time went on, it was very painful. Um, I was supposed to go to London and Paris. I had booked the trip. I had been planning that trip for six months. This is one of the hardest things I had to do. One of my hardest decisions, to be honest. I was planning a trip to go to to go overseas. Been planning it for six months. I felt a week before I was supposed to go. Do you know how, like mentally draining that was to have to a day before the trip you know my flight got pushed back and I questioned God like you know I've already paid for all my stuff like why is my why is my trip being pushed back but I said okay you know I'm trusting Yahweh it's for a reason well that day I had the most excru excruciating pain I've ever had in my life and I could not get out of bed the entire day I had like I tried to make it to work I had to call in and that day, I say, God, like, I'm supposed to fly in the morning 10 hours from Texas all the way over to London, 10 hours. Like, how am I going to? And I was supposed to be over there for uh, a week and a half. So I'm like, God, how am I how am I going to be able to do this? How am I going to be able to walk? I couldn't even get out of bed. Like, and, you know, <laughs> you know, whenever we get hurt or we have pain and we start looking up things on social media, you know, it can get kind of heavy. But. You know, things can kind of seem uh, worse than they are. Well, I was in bed, and long story short, I canceled my trip the day before I was supposed to go because I know exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to vlog. I wanted to do photography. I had so many things that I had planned, but it didn't work out. I questioned God for the longest. Like, when I say the longest, I mean for, like, a good month. I was like, God, like, why would you do this to me? Spend all this money, which I only got 40% back, but... I digress. Why would you let me do all this just to 
throw this fork in my plans a week before I was supposed to go. Right. And I didn't understand like what it meant, you know, and I think it was God telling me that I needed to slow down. I needed to put him first. I needed to get back into uh, my being and actually spend time with him because honestly I didn't make time for him. I, I, I really just, like I said, my day was filled and this situation is, is one of the hardest things, right? It reminds me of a Bible verse in Corinthians fourth chapter eight through the ninth verse saying, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. For the past two months, I've been going to physical therapy twice a week. I've been having to like discuss with my job if I'm coming back. You know, I read some, like my first CT scan said that I had um, posterior formal stenosis. Like I said, I saw some things online that I wouldn't be able to walk again. I saw some things that was like, I'm going to have to get an at-home job because walking and sitting down would be too painful for me. And that day where I canceled my flight and I read all of that, my mind really just went everywhere. I just gave, I, I mean, my hope kind of went down the drain. I was like really frantic. I, I called my mom and it's like, man, like, I don't know if I'd be able to walk. I'd be in a wheelchair again. I was in just too much pain. And it really took for the past two months, me slowing down, me being still, me listening to God, me listening to the answers, me questioning things, me being at a halt, right? And as I said in my video yesterday, being in the liminal space of not a beginning or end and not knowing which way to turn. I put all of my faith into God, into Yahweh. Every single day I try to tell God, thank you for peace. Thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for just healing my mind and my body and spirit inside and out. I really trusted him through this process. It was not an easy process. I'm about 90% healed now. Thanks to him, thanks to, I guess, that positive mindset that I kept. And today, what is this, November, November, December 11th, I went to the doctor, my uh, spine specialist, earlier this morning. I had taken my MRI Friday. I was waiting on the results. Praise God, praise Yahweh. <laughs> not only do I not have any formal stenosis, I don't have any of that. I don't need any surgery. I don't need injections, any of that stuff. Um... She showed me my spine. She showed me everything there. No fractures, no, everything showed unremarkable. And I just wanted to break down crying. I'm... If you guys knew what, what I've really faced over the past two months, like it has been hard, man. And I am going back to work next Monday, but it's, I can't lie and, and say it hasn't been tough, man, you know, facing this on my own. Like, yes, I do have friends and family that have supported me and given me prayers and everything, but this is something I have to face on my own. I mean, I'm only 27 years old. The thought of not being able to walk again or not being able to, to travel, not being able to exercise, not being able to do things I enjoy was really tough. And mentally, mentally, you know, I tried not to react to my 3D. I tried not to let certain things I saw on the Internet get me down. I tried not to let people's comments or, you know, sometimes I would talk to my employees or stuff. I mean, my coworkers, and they say stuff like, oh, you might need surgery. Or, you know, I went to a couple of doctors and one doctor told me, like, yo, you're going to need injections. Like, you might need surgery. Like, uh, you're going to need this. And it's just like, no. No, like I, I put it in God's name. It's like, no, I trust you fully. And like, this is not going to happen. And so when I saw that today and she was telling me, like, you don't need any of this stuff, you know, come back to see me in eight weeks. If you do feel any more pain in eight weeks and you want to get the injections, you can. But I wouldn't worry about it because you don't need it. And I just like I give thanks to God, man. And I'm just. My message for you guys today is to no matter what you're going through. No matter what your 3D is showing you, no matter what people are saying, I want you to keep going forward. I want you to keep going. I want you to put your trust in Yahweh. I want you to keep a positive mindset. I know that might be a hard thing to do. I know it is. But I'm telling you, everything is possible. Anything is possible. You're going to come out on top, whatever it is. It could be homelessness. It could be, I don't know what it is. Only you know your situation through and through. But I'm just encouraging you. 
to keep that mindset that it's already done. The desires of your heart is already done. This reminds me of another scripture in the Bible, uh, a very popular one, Proverbs 3, 4, and 6, where it says, Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make he will make your path straight. We are not supposed to lean on our own understanding. You know, I did it first and had my mind constantly thinking of the words. I had to really submit, surrender to him, like even order my e-bike. I I didn't know if I was going to be able to get on and ride and stuff because I ordered it. But I was like, there was a fear when I first did it, like, man, how am I going to be able to do all this if I can barely sit down? For those of you who have some type of herniated disc, some type of bulging disc, you know that pain, that sciatica pain that runs down your leg up and down, right? So basically with it, it's this disc, right? We have these vertebrae and we have these five main discs and they're, they're nerves that run along the inner side of it. Well, this the disc... The disc is pushing out and bulging against the nerve. So I had sciatica pain running up and down my leg. And I could barely sit down without it, you know, flaring up at night. It would really get bad. I could barely sleep. A little bit less than two months. But in two months, being 90, 95% healed. And, I mean, sometimes I feel a little bit of uh, hip t- uh, hip tightness when I sit for a little bit, especially during longer movers or things. But it's not bad. Like, it's just a complete 180. And I just give thanks to God. So I'm just saying... Whatever you're going through right now, just keep going. Just know that God has your back, and you will get through it. You will. In retrospect, you always have to look at it. It was for your benefit. You might not have thought about it, but it was. I think I needed that. I'm not saying I needed my injury. Don't get me wrong, but what I'm saying is it allowed me just to slow down and get rid of the distractions that I had. That's enough rambling, but that's all I wanted to say to you guys. I hope you guys got something from this. Um, If this just helped one person, then I give thanks and I praise Yahweh. So thank you guys for watching. Comment below if this message resonated with you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay. I love you. Thank you. God bless you. And I hope your day is great.